Site Evaluation Council. This is the May meeting and uh, call to order. Uh, Ms. Mastro, will you please call the roll? Department of Commerce. Kate Kelly, present. Department of Ecology. Rob Dangle, present. Department of Fish and Wildlife. Mike Livingston is excused. Department of Natural Resources. Dan Seaman is on the line. Utilities and Transportation Commission. Stacey Brewster, present. Chair? Yes, I am here. Um, Chair Drew, there is a quorum for the FSEC Regular Council. Thank you. Are um, there are others on the line who wish to introduce themselves? Tim McMahon. Carol Warner. Bill Warner. Sherman. I'm President of Council for the Environment. Uh, Owen Hurd, Tuso Energy. Eric Melbardis, EDP Renewables. Mark Miller, Pacific Core Shealis Plant. John Thompson, Northwest. John Thompson, Attorney General's Office. We missed the Energy Northwest. Kip Whitehead, Energy Northwest. Thank you. And uh, for the staff, since we are um, remote, and uh, would you please introduce yourselves? This is Sonia Bumpus with FSEC. This is Amy Kidder with FSEC. This is uh, Kyle Overton with FSEC. Tammy Mastro with FSEC. Joan Aiken with FSEC. Stu Henderson with FSEC. And I think that's everyone. So uh, our meeting is, we have before us the proposed agenda. Council members, you see that on the screen in front of you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Ms. Brewster. I move that we approve today's proposed agenda. Thank you. Second? Second. Rob Dingle. Thank you. Um, any questions or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the proposed agenda for today's meeting say, say aye. 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 All opposed? Agenda is approved. Now moving on to the meeting minutes from March 17th, um, two months ago, was our last meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as uh, they you have seen them? Uh, Ms. Brewster? I move that we approve the meeting minutes from the March 17th council meeting. A second? Uh, Rob Dingle, I second. Thank you. Are there any questions or changes on the draft minutes that you have before you? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the March 17th, 2020 uh, meeting, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? The minutes are approved. Moving on to our um, Project updates, Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project. Mr. Melbardis. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Drew, FSEC Council. Uh, this is Eric Melbardis with EDP Renewables for the Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project. Um, there were two periods that I had sent updates on, nothing non-routine to report. Uh, we continue to operate under um, CDC and Governor Inslee COVID guidelines. 
uh, re remote work if possible. Um, still continuing to run split shifts um, to firewall off our crews. Um, so just adjusting to our new normal here. Are there any questions? Thank you. Next we have Wild Horse uh, Wind Facility. Yes, thank you, Chair Drew. For the record, this is Jennifer Diaz with Puget Sound Energy at the Wild Horse Wind Facility. Um, for March and April, uh, due to the heightened level of caution regarding the coronavirus, all PSD generation facilities were directed to limit access to only essential employees and contractors to ensure the safe and continued operation of the facility. In accordance with Governor Inslee's Stay Home, Stay Healthy order issued on March 23rd, employees who can work from home have been directed to do so. Uh, the entire wind farm and the Renewable Energy Center were closed to the public during the month of April. And then in accordance with the Operation Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, a semi-annual annual stormwater inspection was completed following spring snowmelt on March 10th. And overall, the site is stable and in excellent condition, and stormwater BMPs function properly and were maintained as needed. And that's all Are I have. There, thank you. Are there any questions from council members? Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have the Chehalis Generation Facility. Mr. Miller? This is Mark Miller. Uh, Jeremy was going to give a report. Oh, but okay. I, his phone may not be working as okay. we are all continuing to isolate. <laughs> for the uh, month of uh, March report, the only non-routine item to report there was that we did receive the final uh, verifiable emissions reduction credits from the National Climate Trust from the Linden Power Project. So a total of 68,263 tons were delivered. And then for the April report, we <clears throat> have been working with uh, FSEC staff and the Southwest Clean Air Agency on a redo of RADA re uh, requirements for the NOx emissions. The contractor, Montrose, had used a calibration uh, bottle that was out of date and we reran the test and all uh, preliminary tests as reviewed by Clint Lamoureux by the Southwest Clean Air Agency in uh, collaboration with uh, our FSEC site siting specialist. Kyle Overton were, uh, were all passing and approved. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from council members? Thank you. Grays Harbor Energy Center. Mr. Sharon. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council Members. Um, this is Chris Sharon, Plant Manager at Grays Harbor Energy Center. For the month of March, uh, we only had one non routine item, and that is on the, or excuse me, the month of April. That's March's minutes you have up there, operating notes, though. So. Um, for the, the one item for April is on the 9th April on initial restart of gas turbine 2 following a forced outage trip triggered potential deviation from the PS, uh, PSD emissions and the FSEC staff was notified prior to Grays Harbor Energy Center proceeding with the restart. Um, also during that initial startup, another uh, post Gas turbine combustion hardware rebuild emissions tuning is required to attain optimum or minimum emissions. And this required shutting off the ammonia flow to the SCR catalyst during a portion of the tuning. So the FSEC staff was again notified prior and we're currently coordinating with Orca and FSEC staff to address our event. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Any questions? Any questions from council members? And thank you. 
energy. Sorry, this is Ecology with the the F6 site specialist, Grace Harbor. I have a quick update on the air permit. If if oh, the council I'm sorry. Like to hear it. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Overton. That's yeah, so just a quick update on Grace Harbor's Title V air permit. Um, the EPA comment period ended uh, on April 30th. We we did not receive any comments, and, and F6 staff, in coordination with our contractor at Orca and the facility, in the process of finalizing that permit in preparation for final issuance by the council. And that's my update. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was what I was going to. Add. This is Rob Dingle with Ecology. So that was what I was going to check in about. So that's what I wanted to know. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, um, Columbia Generating Station and WNP one and four Energy Northwest. Good afternoon. This is Kip Whitehead reporting for Energy Northwest. Uh, for the Washington Nuclear Projects 1 and 4, we have no updates for the months of March and April. And for the Columbia Generating Station, we have no updates for the months of March and April. Okay, thank you. Ms. Aiken, if you can put up the agenda again, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have paper in front of me. I don't have that anymore, which is fine. OK, so now we are moving to the council update on air rule 46378. Ms. Kidder. Um, Chair Drew, if I may jump in really quick. Resolution 157, I see it right there on the agenda. Thank you. Also, um, for the Columbia Solar Project, I wanted to provide an update to the council. Okay. We skipped over you there. Okay. And all, okay. I apologize to everybody um, as uh, I need to have the agenda in front of me. Is there an update also on Desert Claim? Uh, staff continue to coordinate with the certificate holder, but there are no project updates at this time for Desert Claim. Um, and staff are continuing to work with the certificate holder and our agency contractors to prepare for pre-construction plan review and related efforts for Columbia Solar. Okay. Any questions from council members? Okay, thank you. Now we are going, go, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask if I should jump into the resolution 157 update. Yes, please. Thank you. And this is a new item on the agenda. This is, this is a new item for Council's attention. So a brief history, annual fish collection is required per the Columbia Generating Station Site Certification Agreement or the SCA. The specifics of the fish collection requirements are detailed in the Environmental Monitoring Program as attachment one of the SCA. Fish collection is required to determine the operational effects of Columbia Generating Station on the aquatic food chain. Resolution 157 was approved by the FSEC Council on September 24th, 1979 and amended on September 9th, 1985 to serve in lieu of a scientific collection permit. This resolution included fish collection from the Columbia River for WNP 1 and 4 and WNP 2, as well as in the Chehalis River for the planned nuclear facilities near Satsup known as WNP 3 and 5. Currently, fish collection is only required for the operating WNP2 facility that is currently known as Columbia Generating Station, as construction of the other facilities was not completed. In addition, the resolution also contains um, some outdated sampling provisions. For this reason, FSEC staff are recommending that Resolution 157 be rescinded. 
the annual Columbia Generating Station sampling period begins after the upper, the upper Columbia River spring run Chinook salmon migration, which occurs April through June, and after the upper Columbia River steelhead migration that occurs April through mid-May. Energy Northwest would begin sampling after June 30th each year to minimize impacts to these protected species under what staff is proposing as a new resolution that we would present to the council in June. This new resolution would serve in lieu of an annual scientific collection permit. FSEC is prefer preparing the new resolution in consultation with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. The new resolution would follow the Department of Fish and Wildlife scientific collection permit guidelines and annual reporting requirements. The new resolution would include a list of resident fish species that may be consumed by fishermen and can be collected from the Columbia River to be used as indicator samples. Control fish will be collected from fish hatcheries owned by DFW at the Columbia River Rheingold Fish Hatchery and the Snake River Lions Fish Hatchery. The control fish will consist of Chinook salmon and or steelhead salmon. Are there any questions? Are there any questions from council members? So my understanding is that um, the staff will prepare the draft resolution um, in consultation with Department of Fish and Wildlife and have that to council members for review before the June meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. So all council members will have a chance to take a look at that, um, to contact Ms. Kidder or Ms. Moon or Ms. Bumpus with any questions you might have. Um, and then we will bring it up for a vote at the June meeting. That is correct. We understand that no action has been taken on this issue for the facility in quite some time as Resolution 157 has been in service since the 80s. So if any council members have any questions or concerns, staff are welcome to answering any of those questions. Chair Drew, this is Dan Seaman. Uh, I do have a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just curious if there is an appropriate role for tribal consultation on this topic and if that has been considered in any way. I am not sure off the top of my head. I'd have to um, look into whether or not DFW has coordinated any of their um, fish permit work with tribal representatives, but I can look into that further and get a better answer for you. And we'll make sure and have that uh, before we send that answer, before we send out the resolution. Great, thank uh, you. And just to add to that, uh, we will uh, double check uh, Council Member Seaman, but um, uh, I, I believe that um, any coordination um, on the permit or rather the authorization for this, um, it would have been done years ago prior to the, uh, the original resolution. And so um, uh, we'll double check to see uh, if there was anything done at that time that, that would have been, uh, I think when they would have uh, coordinated. Um, and then our update would just be to ensure that it's consistent with DFW's uh, current um, fish collection uh, guidance. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you for that update. Now we will move on to other items. Uh, the first is the Council update on Air Rule 463-78. Ms. Kidder. Thank you. Uh, today, FSEC staff is seeking Council's approval to begin the rulemaking process to amend Washington Administrative Code, or WAC, Chapter 463-78-005, 
General and Operating Permit Regulations for Air Pollution Sources Adoption by Reference. In your packets, you will see a copy of the CR-105, as well as the revised version of WAC 4637805. Because FSEC would be adopting by reference rules that have already been through public comment via Department of Ecology's rulemaking process, this rulemaking qualifies for expedited processing. With council approval, staff will file the CR-105 to the Code Revisor's Office tomorrow, May 20th. The purpose of the proposed rule revisions is to be consistent with ecology and EPA rules and to ensure that FSEC issued permits are in line with current EPA and ecology regulations. These revisions help to fulfill the intent of RCW 8050-040 and RCW 43.21A, which lay the framework for FSEC and ecology to oversee air emissions within the state. The Council's action today would allow for staff to file the CR-105 in time for the May 20th filing deadline. This would allow for the CR-105 to be noticed in the June 3rd publication, which would begin a 45-day public comment period continuing through July 20th. Are there any questions? So what our action is today is to um, approve the filing for public comment and the expedited process. Is that correct? Correct. So, hello, so this is Rob Dengel, uh, Ecology. Go ahead. Um, as noted by staff, good overview. Uh, this is basically incorporating uh, Ecology's existing rules, which was really done uh, due to, to, I say recent, but uh, EPA, EPA guidance um, that we actually had to encompass into the state implementation plan for air quality. So uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. In addition to that, um, to meeting the EPA guidance, there was a lot of, there was a number of additional changes and improvements uh, that were kind of made uh, clearing some things up and then some other uh, some other editing as well so uh, I, I'm I'm frankly in, in support of it but uh, well more than happy to have a conversation before making any motion to to approve are there any other are there any other comments or questions Hearing none, why don't you go ahead with that uh, motion to approve? Mr. Dengel? Yeah, uh, so a uh, motion to approve uh, the rule adoption of 46, uh, of the amendments to 463-78. And that's uh, for public comment. Um, I do have a question. Oh, wait, wait a minute, is there a second? This is Dan Seaman. I'll second that. Thank you. Um, I do have another question. Um, Ms. Kidder, is this uh, expedited process one which uh, we will, if there are no comments, then we'll proceed with adopting this rule or will it be come back before the council? If there are no public comments, the council will um, take action to file the CR 103, which is the adoption of the rule, after which um, the filing date for that would any would begin a 30 day waiting period, um, which is not a public comment period. It's just a 30 day waiting period between the adoption of the filing of the CR 103 and the actual um, enactment of the rules. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other further, are there any comments or questions on this motion? Hearing none, Ms. Mastro, will you call the roll on the adoption of now I need the number in front of me. 46378. 
463, WAC 463 Thank you. Department of Commerce? Aye. Department of Ecology? Aye. Department of Natural Resources? Aye. Utilities and Transportation Commission? Aye. Chair? Aye. That completes the vote. The motion is adopted. We will uh, put these out for public uh, comment and then uh, proceed in the future. Thank you very much. Next item on our agenda is the fourth quarter cost allocation. Ms. Bumpus. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Drew and Council members. For the record, this is Sonia Bumpus. Um, as we do at the beginning of every quarter, um, I have the cost allocation percentages for fourth quarter fiscal year 2020. Um, this is based off of the approved FSEC cost allocation plan uh, for the Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council approved September 2004. For Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project, 10%. Wild Horse Wind Power Project, 10%. Columbia Generating Station, 25%. Columbia Solar, 14%. WNP1, 3%. Whistling Ridge, 3%. Grays Harbor, 1 and 2, 13%. Chehalis Generation Project, 11%. Desert Claim Wind Power Project, 8%. And Grays Harbor Energy, 3 and 4, 3%. And that concludes my update for the cost allocation for fourth quarter fiscal year 2020. Thank you. If we have no other business to come before us, I think this is completes our agenda. So I will now say that this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much and welcome back to Dan Seaman. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>